President, CEO and Co-Founder of NVIDIA, Jensen Huang. Good morning, welcome. Welcome to CES. This year is going to be an amazing year. We have created a ton of stuff that we'd like to share with you. Today I want to talk to you about three things. So let's get started. You know, the last 20 years in our industry, we've had the privilege of helping drive the PC revolution. We advanced the technology of the microprocessor, we advanced the technology of the GPU, we brought 3D to practically every computer in the world, the resolution of the display is getting richer and richer, and every single laptop is now connected on the internet. There's so much going on still in the PC industry. Everybody who wants one, anybody who needs one, already has one. At this point, the PC is no longer your only computer, however. You know that the last several years, we've been immersed in computing devices of all kinds. In fact, this is the beginning of a new era, not the PC revolution, not the PC era, but the era of personal computing. Now, in this particular area, you have devices of all kinds to help make your lives a little bit richer. It could be a PC. My first digital device was a BlackBerry. Now I use it 99.9% .9 of the time. Some people's are iPod, some people are PSP, some people use an iPhone. They all use it for a specific reason. These devices were created with a few characteristics uh, in common. One, they all do what we all did prior. Still too uh, clunky, it's still heavy. It, uh, the battery life just simply doesn't last long enough for us to feel comfortable about taking it everywhere. Not the least, in my case, I've got my life data, my life digital data on my laptop. I'm, I'm more, I would be happier to lose my wallet. I'm happier to lose my wallet and have them abuse it however they like um, than to lose my notebook any day of the week. And so this is something that's just simply too precious to want to take around. You certainly don't want to break it. You certainly don't want to lose it. And so we need another idea. We need a solution that gives us the um, portability and the accessibility and the convenience of a smartphone, but the resolution and power and performance and full web compatibility that I can go to any website and it just works of a PC. However, this having the performance of a PC and the portability and mobility of a, of a smartphone um, has been a daunting, daunting challenge to achieve, as you can imagine why. The performance makes it heavy, the performance makes it hot, and the performance makes it expensive. Mobility caused the devices to be smaller, using smaller chips. And so the question is, how do we solve that problem? Well, today, I can announce declare that 2010 is going to be the beginning of the tablet revolution. Here's an example of a tablet. I'm going to show you plenty of it in action here. Big ones, small ones, ones that are designed for living rooms, ones that are designed for your purse, ones that are designed for your bed stand. There are going to be tablets of every form and kind coming. Okay. The tablet revolution. Now what's made it possible, all the pieces are have in fact been around for some time. What's made it possible and that missing piece is a processor that allows us to um, set power like a mobile chip, but deliver the performance necessary to render a web, an application, at the same resolution of a PC. So it needs the performance of a PC, but the power sipping capability characteristics of a cell phone. Today we'd like to introduce our new Tegra. This is a chip that has um, consumed 500 engineers the greatest achievement undertaking of building a computer inside NVIDIA since our founding. This processor is nothing short of miracle to us. 
And every time we use it, and every time we experience it, we still can't believe it. We can't wait to show it to you here in just a moment. Tegra has eight independent processors. It is the world's first dual core Cortex A9 CPU. My netbook doesn't have dual core yet. My netbook doesn't have dual core yet, and our tablet is about to get dual core. So you have a dual core CPU. It's about 10 times the performance of your average smartphone. And that 10 times the performance is gonna be all necessary to drive resolutions that are anywhere from four to eight times higher. And it still sips power like a mobile chip. About 20 times less power than that of a PC. So the Tegra, this amazing chip, is going to allow us to deliver the experience of a PC, however, achieving that with very, very, very little power. So that you could have the portability and it's like <coughs> in a full computer. So this is a complete Tegra processor, Tegra computer, including its memory. And on the back side of it, on the back side of it are the flash memories. This requires no power management, no heat pipes, no fans, no ventilation, just electricity. Turn it on and it works. This little tiny computer, you can imagine, is going to change form factor design so the tablet or other mobile internet devices has more CDs than I own. And so, so uh, I can listen to every single one of my songs and never charge again. And so this is a, uh, in, fact, in fact, somebody was, was saying earlier, and I had the same experience, uh, in my Zune HD, which had a first generation Tegra in it, uh, you just never seem to have to charge it. Just never seem to have to charge it. Just never seem to use, use up the battery that's inside for uh, playing music. 140 hours. It also has the ability to play 16 hours of video on one charge. And so 16 hours, basically you could travel to any point, any furthest point in the world, and you can watch high definition movies the entire way. 16 hours of high def movies. And so this, this ability to access the to on a test drive and you know, a little coffee while she's surfing the web, a little uh, Facebook on the couch, a little Farmville in bed. You know, you can kind of see it. You can see it. This is the future of computing, right? So I'd like to thank Laura Bailey for, for modeling for us. Did a wonderful job. Okay, so with that, let's, um, let's do this. Let's uh, enough talk about Tegra. Let's put it to action. Let's take a look at what it can do. Let's introduce and welcome Mike Rayfield, the general manager of the Tegra Business Unit. Hey, let's see, what do I have here? So you've got an ICD tablet. All right, so this one looks like the one that um, uh, Verizon and, and Motorola are using to demonstrate um, 4G. Absolutely, they're doing it just this week in the show. Wow, okay. Well, let me see what it can do. So let's see. Let me, uh, you guys can all see that. So this is a, this is a tablet, I and mean, this is the home page. And um, let me just uh, launch a browser. Did I touch it? There you go. Let me uh, launch a browser. <laughs> browser. <laughs> So, let uh, you browse, you launch a browser. Oh, there you go, I just launched a browser. Okay. Now this is a, knowing how to use Android is apparently a uh, required skill here. Why don't we go buy something? Here, go ahead. Yeah. All right, let's go to Amazon. Let's buy something here. The, this resolution is 10 by six. Holy cow, that's fast. All right, so I'm sitting on, I'm sitting on my couch and I'm spending, Spending money like crazy now, <laughs> I can I can buy anywhere. Okay, all right. Well, what can you do? So I've got a tablet here from uh, Foxconn. You'll see it's uh, uh, it's got a great user interface. You can you can click around. 
navigate, see the weather in Moscow, uh, go off and look at, uh, you want to look at your photo album, you got your photo album here, it uh, sorts it all out, you can go show your family your vacation here, you've got, a, uh, you've got the ability to go off and look at uh, all your videos, so you store all your content here, watching movies on these is obviously you know, important. You're gonna you're gonna watch your movies. You're gonna surf the web. And you so, can watch movies in, in standard definition all the way up to HD, 1080p, 720p. So you have one set of content if you want. Now you can watch it on this, but you could also connect it to a HD TV through HDMI. Plug it in Plug HDMI it in. on the side. Uh -huh. So you travel to Asia. You didn't finish your movie. You get in the hotel room. You plug it in. You look at it on the large screen. You're good to go. Uh huh. All right. What else do you have? So another th interesting thing. What else do I get? You got here. This right. is your. This, this is your money. Yep. So, uh, this is a tablet from MSI. I was just looking at a tablet from uh, playing with a tablet from uh, ICD. So you've heard of uh, you've heard of, of uh, a company called Notion Inc. So Notion Inc. has uh, um, created some really interesting designs with uh, the second generation Integra. So one of the things you're going to want to do, obviously, is to read your books. Right? You're watching your movies. You're surfing the web. You want to go off and uh, and read the book. So you can do it on this device. Then also, if you've got some ambient light and you want even longer battery life. And what you do is you push a button here, and it basically turns into an electric ink kind of uh, uh, technology. I see, so the display is dual modes, both front lid and back lid. Exactly. So what that says is now I'm less than two tenths of a watt reading, so you can read, you know, every book you've ever owned. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So and then uh, and then finally, what we've got is the ability to go off and do, as I talked about before, great videos. So let's um, let's see what the videos look like on this. Okay. And we'll just pick one here. Now this is a 1080p video or movie, and uh, looks pretty good. So maybe what we should try to do is look at what it looks like on today's technology. Let's look at it on a, a uh, Intel. Yeah, let's um, have a race. Adam, take a look at it, and then we'll look at it in a temper. <laughs> okay. How about that? All right. So you're sitting here watching a high definition movie on this thing, right? So this is queued up. This is a 10 megabit trailer, uh, 1080p playing on a on a uh, Intel um, Atom processor. And unless you're really good, you can't get the, the noise and the picture to line up. So let's take a look at what it looks like on a Tegra. This doesn't even look like a soundtrack in this movie. So now, the one on the other side, boy, that looks pretty good. So let's just say. Now let's blow that up. Let's just look at that one. This is a 1080p, 10 megabit stream playing through Tegra. Looks pretty stunning. So you can watch this at home, you can watch it on your device. Wow, you can't clap for Iron Man, what can you? Holy cow. Oh, that looks terrific. Thank you very much. Okay, so you could do, you could browse the web at each, you know, in full resolution. You could go to YouTube. You could go to Amazon. You can go to any website, frankly. You can pop over to DeviantArt. You can go over to, you know, play a little Farmville. You can pop over and, and uh, run some local HD movies if you like. Plug it into a television if you like. Right, and you do it for days. I mean, it's all about not having to be plugged in, and that frees people to do these things wherever they are. Mm -hmm. Wow. I can imagine one for every room. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mike. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. The Air platform is a really important platform uh, for Adobe, and really important platform for the industry. It's a it's a platform that incorporates includes the rendering and and the electronic reading of digital magazines, the pagination and all the browsing um, uh, browser for you to enjoy either connected in a connected way you know, video streaming uh, while you're uh, reading a newspaper, or in a disconnected way, okay, where you're on the, on the airport and, and uh, on the airplane and you would like to read the last 10 magazines that you've got. And so this is something that's really, really missing from the industry. The Kindle has the ability to read digital books in black and white, um, but nothing really allows you to have that rich uh, multimedia and colored uh, and high resolution experience necessary for a digital uh, uh, magazine reader. And so this is gonna enable us to, to do that. We're looking, uh, we're working very hard on it right now and we're hoping to show it to you at the mobile conference uh, coming up in a few months. Okay, so I wanna thank Adobe for 
for uh, acknowledging Tegra and for their investment in this platform. Who has been uh, a pioneer and a leader of the PC video game industry. Epic is one of the greatest companies in PC video game history and one of the most important companies, frankly, in the development of in the development and advancement of uh, video games. Uh, this is a company that has created uh, several very, very important uh, game franchises from the Unreal franchise to the Gears of War franchise that we all love playing. Um, their, their games are not only fun, uh, but they're beautiful and, of course, uh, never, never short of technological marvel, which is one of the most important parts of uh, 3D graphics games. You know, 3D is it's an interesting field. You have to have that, that uh, sensibility that's at the intersection between technology and art. And artistic capability is one of the things that, that Epic has always uh, been, been fabulous at. Uh, I'd like to uh, bring on board uh, Tim Sweeney. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Sitting right in front. Hey, Tim. Tim. Tim is the founder and the CEO of, of uh, Epic Games. Uh, they're based in North Carolina. Uh, not only is he, is he an extraordinary uh, computer scientist, one of the best programmers on the planet, I believe. He's also a, a wonderful executive, and he's done, done a fabulous job building, building Epic. We've been working together for a long, long time. You started the company in 1991, right. and I started NVIDIA in 1993, and the two of us have been in the PC industry a long time. You know, so, so how do you compare, compare what's happening now in the mobile industry to what happened to us in the PC industry over the years? Well, it's really quite incredible, Jensen. I remember the first revolution we went through together was the you know, Viva TNT GPUs, the first time you had a graphics accelerator that really delivered kick-ass consumer graphics performance. Uh, yeah, that was back in 1996 or 7 or 8 or so. Um, the technology inside, you know, what, what's happening here? So this is the full version of Unreal Engine 3 up and running on the Tegra platform. We have all of the lighting features, the gameplay features, the physics, and everything else that's available you know, in the engine on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and high-end PC platforms, and it's all running on Tegra. At really so this engine, this engine is the same engine that runs on the PlayStation 3, the PC, and now it's running on Tegra. Yeah, absolutely. Same engine, same tool, same development process. So now when you're building a game, you can think about shipping on all of those high-end platforms and also targeting mobile and sharing the content and the game design across the, the broad spectrum of devices. And here it's not just mobile, it's mobile HD with very advanced features and you know, great looking graphics that you expect from a high-end platform. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to just think about comparing those two to, uh, say, a Nintendo DS in, in capability, how would you even compare it? I'd say they're decades apart, right? If you look at Nintendo DS, most of the games there are comparable to PC in 1998 or so. Uh, whereas this brings, brings mobile up to current generation high-end console specs, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you were to compare this now to where we came from, you know, every single graphics card NVIDIA's ever made, you've used. Some of them you liked better, some of them you didn't like as well, and some of them I liked better, and some of them I didn't like as well. And, but but uh, you've played with and you've, you've uh, touched every single one of our graphics chips ever built in a way that very few people do. And I didn't mean that. I didn't mean anything by that. But, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. And so, so as a as a programmer, you see so much more of the GPU than just about anybody else who, who writes software. Um, how do you compare this the Tegra, the new Tegra, to which one of our chips would you say um, in the history of, of PCs that are kind of it's kind of like that? Well, this is comparable to high-end desktop PCs only a few years ago. Uh, you know, maybe three, four years ago, um, which says that nowadays mobile and PC are evolving in lockstep. You're not seeing mobile being a generation behind or more. Mm -hmm. And having lived and been an active programmer through a factor of a million performance increase in the, in the hardware we have available, it's really incredible to see that's running, running on a mobile device. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, the great insight here is that for content developers, you could use the same flow, the same tools, and the same engine for both the console, the PC, and now a mobile device. You don't have to create two different sets of art. You don't have to create two different sets of assets. Um, you could create the same for, for all three. Yeah, absolutely. Same tools, same technology, same game experience. Yeah, that's terrific. Where do you see mobile gaming go from here? 
What does it look like someday? I think we're we're only a decade away from reaching true movie quality graphics in games. Funky, um, I forgot. If I figured that you guys were probably thinking it was just a, a trailer or a movie. movie. Um, in fact, it's running on this. So here's here's the um, uh, here's the Tegra development platform. You can go onto the web right now to our Tegra developer site, and um, and you can order one of these. And it basically comes with a display, the entire computer behind the display, and all of the tools and connectivity so that you can connect it to your PC and have a more productive working environment. Okay, and we're, our hope is that this little kit, which is very affordable, will allow people to, to develop crazy types of programs from, from everywhere. This will be the new Heath kit of the 21st century. Three-year-olds, four-year-olds, writing little Android apps, making a fortune, selling them two cents at a time. <laughs> Book readers, we've got games, we've got videos. Holy cow, you've got everything that you really do on a PC. It's just that you can do it much, much more conveniently now uh, in the form factor of a tablet. And um, uh, it doesn't have to replace a PC because I think the PC will still be far, far, far superior from an input um, perspective. And also the performance is going to continue to skyrocket in a PC uh, for years to come. And so there's still a lot, lot more to do. But there's no question that the pieces have come together. That this year, that this moment, is the beginning of the tablet re revolution. We are now in engaged development with PC companies, consumer electronics companies, and mobile communications companies, and automotive companies, in building Tegra mobile computers. We've never had, ever in the history of our company, a product that has been simultaneously engineered and developed into all those four industries at the same time. And if the number of, the amount of enthusiasm over the tablet and the number of design wins and the number of projects that are undergoing in tablets, whether it's